My name is Craig Anderson. I'm a distinguished professor of psychology at Iowa State University. Um, my colleagues and my students and I have been studying violent video game effects uh, for about 15 years now. Prior research in this area of violent video game effects um, has established quite clearly on the basis of laboratory experimental studies, uh, survey kinds of studies, as well as long-term uh, follow-up studies, that exposure to violent video games increases the likelihood of later aggressive behavior. Uh, we also know that violent video games increase aggressive thinking, uh, aggressive emotions, uh, and decreases pro-social behavior and uh, feelings of empathy. There have been a lot of shootings in the news uh, in recent years. The, one of the biggest stories in recent years, of course, has been the Newtown shootings. Um, and, of course, that shooter was uh, shown to be uh, very much involved in violent video games. And this has led some groups to uh, basically blame violent video games as somehow the major cause uh, uh, for school shootings. And of course, that's too simple. That isn't r really what goes on. Uh, uh, we know that there are a lot of risk factors for extremely violent behavior. Um, and what we see in a lot of these, sh these school shootings is that there are multiple risk factors. In other words, uh, extreme behavior like that never takes place when there's only one risk factor present. So risk factors like uh, uh, social exclusion or, or, or being, uh, uh, you know, having a lot of social problems, being picked on or at least perceiving that you're being picked on, uh, that's uh, a common risk factor. Uh, growing up in homes with uh, uh, lots of aggression in the home is another risk factor that's present in some but not all of these cases. But one of the risk factors that's present in a lot of these cases is uh, uh, a lot of exposure to media violence, including video game violence. Um, again, it's not necessarily present in all such shootings, but that's, the, that's how risk factors work, right? That not all of them are present in every case, uh, but when you have five or six or seven risk factors coming together, that's when you tend to get more extreme behavior. And what this new study from, from uh, Singapore adds is that it's the first major longitudinal study uh, at which the, or in which the participants were measured at three separate points in time. Uh, and these were separated by a year. Uh, and what we really were looking for is to test the hypothesis that the reason why violent video games increase aggressive behavior over the long term uh, is that because it essentially changes the uh, way that the participants, uh, in this case children and adolescents, changes the way that they think. Uh, you can almost think of this as a, as a, as a small change in personality. Um, so what essentially this study shows is that, in fact, uh, repeatedly playing a lot of violent video games over time increases aggressive thought patterns. This study is focused on uh, a little over 3,000 uh, children and adolescents from uh, Singapore. Uh, we have measures of their video game playing habits, measures of uh, aggressive thought patterns, and measures of aggressive behavior. Uh, these thought patterns and video game habits uh, were measured at each of uh, these three different time periods. Aggressive behavior was measured at both the second and third time period. The main result was that, uh, as predicted by, by uh, theory, that uh, playing violent video games at one point in time leads to an increase in aggressive thought patterns and that 
such an increase in aggressive thought patterns at one point in time leads to an increase in aggressive behavior as measured by a later uh, uh, time period. So in other words, we now know that one of the main mechanisms that uh, causes violent video games to increase aggressive behavior uh, is this increase or this change in aggressive thinking patterns.